Hello and welcome. Today is November 17th, 2022, and this is the Benjamin Stewart Podcast, an educational podcast making teaching and learning more transparent. I'm Benjamin Stewart at BenjaminLStewart.net, and in episode 110, I'm going to be addressing the question, how does RemNode add value to my current workflow? Before I get into today's topic, if you have any thoughts, insights, or would like to share any of your experiences related to today's topic, feel free to reach out to me at my Twitter handle at B-N-L-E-E-Z. Today, I want to get into RemNote. Today's episode really is a, an extension of a, the prior podcast, pod, podcast episode 109, where I talk about different technologies that I am currently using this semester, RemNote being one of them. But uh, today I want to talk about and actually show some aspects of RemNote that I'm currently using and really explain a little bit how it, add va it adds value to what I, what I do. I want to compare today RemNote with a couple of other, actually three different other services, uh, maybe actually four other services that I've used in the past and explain very briefly why, again, RemNote for me is the best option. Today's discussion is not a deep dive into RemNote or any other service. You can find a lot of videos online to go into any of the uh, services that I'm going to be sharing here with you today. And when you're making your own decision about which works best for you, uh, it's always best to go in and, and uh, get, uh, get the details, see what your workflow is, evaluate how you like to work and what you need out of a service, out of these basically note-taking services. Uh, before making the best uh, decision for you. So today I want to talk about RemNote. And to begin, I think it's useful to start talking about my own professional context. Now, uh, I mentioned earlier that I'm sharing my screen here. And so if you are listening to the podcast, you might refer to the link in the show notes to uh, if you're interested in seeing basically my RemNote layout. I'm going to go into briefly how I'm using it and showing you as I as we walk through a certain pages or certain REM documents that I'm currently using. Um, but yeah, feel free to check out the video if you uh, want to see my actual REM note setup. Okay, so to provide some context, I'm an English language teacher trainer. I teach in a BA program in English language teaching in Mexico. And a lot of what I do and a lot of my planning, my lesson planning, and how I evaluate some of my classes, I want to, I try to make that available to my students and also in some cases to the general public. So for me, any kind of decision that I make in terms of technology that I want to use needs to help me facilitate that process. So I want to compare today RemNote and I want to mention actually four other services that I've used in the past and really describe or explain briefly why those are not the best options for me. So I've used Evernote before in the past and Evernote's a great service. I, I like how it's, it syncs across many devices. There's, there are a lot of pros to using Evernote, but I just felt like it, um, it was actually, it turned out to me to be more like a Word document in the sense that I just felt like I was putting too much information uh, out there. And if I wanted to, or if I want to write an article, I'm going to use a, a word processing software, whether it's Word or um, only Office is what I'm currently using. But I felt like Evernote and the way that it was set up to be able to cross link between notes was a little bit cumbersome and it just didn't fit my, uh, my preference really. Uh, RemNote, I'm sorry, Rome Research, I checked out briefly only enough to know that it's more expensive to, than RemNote. The layout is not as visually appealing in my opinion and it's not quite as intuitive as RemNote. So basically those three reasons for me was enough to opt out of Rome research. I used Notion for one or two semest semesters with my students and I, I really like Notion. I was able to set up a, an educational account so it, ga it gives you a little bit more functionality than the free version but it's I think better for 
team building, if you're working in teams and sharing information across your, your team, and you value database uh, setups, then I think Notion is definitely the best choice. But I just felt like I, at the end of the day, I felt like I was using or spending more time thinking about Notion and trying to figure out how to set up my workflow than just getting to the task at hand. So again, for me, uh, setting up notes using a database was overkill. And I just needed something fairly simple, fairly straightforward. And again, I, I need a service that I can get right into my work and not have to think so much about the technology itself. Now, Obsidian, I really liked. I like the whole concept of being able to set up on your own local computer your notes. And although it does offer, offer syncing service and being able to publish your, your work online, that uh, there's an added cost. And it's quite expensive in my humble opinion. So really for that reason, Obsidian is just not an option because I do need a syncing service. I need a way to sync across my devices and I need to be able to share uh, with others information that I'm uh, including in my note-taking app. Now I know that Obsidian, there are ways if you want to go get into GitHub and there are probably some other ways, but it just, again, I felt like to do that, to be able to set that up, I would, uh, there was just too much of a, a learning curve. And again, I need something easy, something I can get right to, right into and, and get to, again, get to the work, get to my workflow and get accomplished what I, what I need to. So generally speaking, those are the four other note-taking apps that I've used in the past. And generally speaking, those are the reasons why I opted out of those uh, those four. So RimNote. I've, I've got a couple of points, several points here that I want to uh, share with you in terms of how I feel RimNote adds value to me. The first being that RimNote is Linux friendly in the sense that uh, there is no dedicated app per se, but you can set up a web app either <clears throat> either using Chrome or a Chrome-based browser, or you can uh, set up uh, Firefox using this add-on for creating, uh, creating a web app. Now, just to show you here, this is, let me pull this up here. It's called Progressive Web Apps for Firefox. I think web apps is automatic uh, in Chrome, so you can just install the app, but <clears throat> it's fairly straightforward. Uh, to be able to set up an app like I've done here on my screen where I can include it in the panel and open it up as I need to. And uh, I can have this open up automatically so when I boot up the computer, it goes right into my my rim note. So yeah, pretty easy, pretty straightforward, and it works just fine uh, based on this setup. Okay, but again, you can, if you have a preference for Chrome, you can set it, you can install the app and uh, have, have it, <clears throat> excuse me, have it installed there on your, your panel. Of course, you can access REM through the browser itself, but I prefer the, the app. All right, so the next point here that I want to share is, uh, is flashcards. Now, if you go online and you find information uh, in YouTube, for example, looking up REM note, you're going to find a lot of examples, a lot of talk about flashcards. And I do feel like flashcards is a value add. I think that it is something important and uh, something that's very useful and unique when you compare RimNote with other services. But to be honest, I don't use flashcards all that much. I've set up a lot of flashcards. And to show you here, I have... I do have classes where I teach uh, TOEFL types of vocabulary. And so I have a, I do have a RIM set up with flashcards. Okay. And I'm not going to get into how to set up flashcards in RIM note, but um, I have spent enough time with it to see that there is some value in it. I don't put a lot of weight into 
the flashcard functionality in and of itself. I think if you combine it with cross-linking, bi-directional links and references and embedding REMS, which I'll talk about here in a minute. Um, yeah, I think flashcards can be, uh, can be a good way to promote one's learning uh, if it's combined with other techniques and methods and, and uh, the way that notes are being set up. But I, I do think as a, an instructor that, that having the ability to create flashcards is something that I'm going to continue to look into in terms of my own teaching practice and maybe incorporating that <clears throat> a little bit in class, also promoting it with students to see how they can begin using flashcards along with other uh, ways of interacting and, and applying different strategies to broaden their, their comprehension. But certainly, I think, um, yeah, I think flashcards, using the flashcard function is, uh, is, is important, but again, to date, it's not really at the top of my, my list. All right, the next thing here, the knowledge graph. Again, it's something that I think is cool. I do like it. I, occasionally, I will refer to the knowledge graph, but to be honest, I, it's not something I rely on or refer to all that often. But again, it is something that does add value that I think is useful and glad that it exists. It's probably something I'll be looking into in greater detail in the future. I think it's, it's important to mention that I've been using RemNote for three or four months since October. Uh, I'm sorry, since August. Um, so again, probably the knowledge graph will be a little bit more uh, helpful or useful when I get into and uh, start looking and trying to organize my my knowledge graph in terms of making further connections and seeing where maybe some clusters are isolated and I want to bring them into my overall graph. Um, certainly, I think that graph would, would be helpful. Okay, so the next point, support and features and their roadmap. Their support is really good. I've reached out to them many on many, many occasions, uh, either via email. I've also posted questions. They respond quickly and are very helpful. And uh, yeah, I've relied on the support of RemNote uh, to, to get into how to use some of the shortcuts and, and understand some of the, the features that they offer. But I do like their roadmap and how you can request features going into their website and being able to search first to see if others have requested similar features and if not, being able to add those. And the good thing here is that they there are responses. Like when you offer a feature, invariably somebody will respond and either say that that feature already exists or try to find some kind of workaround or even just acknowledge that, yeah, maybe that's something that they put on uh, their, their roadmap. So great support from, from what RemNote. Uh, the next feature here, embedding YouTube videos and audios from podcast. Again, this is something that I value. This is probably something that all of the services offer very easily. Uh, but again, it, it's something that I use all the time. And I like being able to embed or create sub-levels or subtopics where maybe I have the YouTube video at one level and then I'm able to uh, indent and create notes or, or annotations related to the video so that it all clusters together, that it all uh, is, is part of the same rim. So you would have a rim within a rim, so to speak, or a rim note within a rim note. And it's just, it just makes it very easy to organize information, setting up uh, the different points or the different notes in an outline uh, feature, an outline form. Okay, the next point, you can set up a document as being pinned. You can have it set as draft or finished. And pinned for me, in this case, if I open this up, I have a few... REMs, uh, REM documents that have been uh, pinned, and these are classes, for example, that I that I uh, currently am teaching. So it's just very easy to to easily go to different REM note documents to get to the information. And the draft and the finished status that they have, the statuses that they offer. Uh, to be honest, I I don't use those as much. 
Um, for me, basically everything's quote unquote finished. I would probably, or better yet, in the draft form as as these notes are, I continue to add information and they continue to change as I'm building out my knowledge base. So at this point, I don't really make a distinction between draft and finished. I do make a distinction between the pinned documents because again, those are the ones that I'm using more in, um, in, in a particular workflow. Uh, this semester, again, the, the examples would be either newsletters that I'm working on, podcasts that I'm working on, or just classes that I'm currently teaching. So just a quick way to get to those documents. So I, th that's very helpful. And uh, the draft and finished, uh, to, to date, I'm not really making a distinction between those, those two categories. Okay, the next point, personal knowledge management. So it's very easy to set up tags, portals, references, and sources. And for me, this is where, in addition to setting up flashcards, you can really find your, your workflow in a way that can build your understandings and knowledge as you start to connect these different rims. Tags are fairly typical. These are probably the least important. I am using some tags, but uh, I'm not using tags extensively uh, throughout my knowledge base at this, at this time. But I do use portals, which are basically just imported rims. This is really nice when you want to be able to see a rim within a rim being able to embed that into a rim is very useful. So if you were to may make a change to the original rim note document, that would apply to all of the embedded rims wherever they, they may be throughout your, your knowledge base. So that's a wonderful function. That's a very valuable um, function or feature of rim note that, that I find very useful. The references are bi-directional links, of course. Uh, that's typical with most note-taking apps, but again, adding a lot of value as I add on the fly using uh, the keyboard shortcuts. I can easily and very quickly and very seamlessly add portals and references uh, and sources, for that matter, uh, using the keyboard shortcuts. I don't need to use the mouse to be able to cre create those on the fly if they're new or if I'm doing a search. I don't, very ra rarely do I need to use my mouse to be able to, to find the additional information. And uh, the references, again, are very useful. The sources are basically external links, but again, very useful to be able to just use the uh, slash command to add sources very, very quickly. Another feature that I find very useful in RimNote is the ability to annotate PDFs. So you can bring in and import a PDF document and bring it up on your screen side by side to, and then edit that document. I'll show you an example here. Uh, this is one of the views, one of the main views in RemNote where you're, you're able to see all your notes here. In this case, I have documents, folders, top level rims, PDFs, and daily documents. Now the PDFs here, if I bring up one example, I have some here's a document that I have highlighted and I can bring up here these are the direct quotes these are the highlighted text from the PDF that now are brought into the the rim so you can see here I've got a list of highlighted text from the PDF along with a pinned icon where I can click and it takes me directly to the the text and if I go back to the document let's say I go back to the highlighted text I can scroll down here and open up the PDF the bottom of the page and I can do a side-by-side -side. and this is helpful when you want to add let's say annotations or you want to make analytic memos to the uh, to the text so this would be a direct quote and then I can insert a, a quote I can insert some kind of annotation if I want or if I'm practicing to if I want to paraphrase the idea I can I can see it very easily uh, what the original text is how I would paraphrase it and then if I need to jump to 
the PDF if I need more context. So just having this, this functionality in terms of how I go about annotating um, PDFs, very useful, something that I find very valuable in my own workflow. Again, you can find information online if, you're, if, this, if this is new, uh, and uh, there's, uh, there are great uh, videos uh, online that you can find that, that shows you step-by-step -step how to go about doing uh, what I'm showing you here. So the last thing I want to talk about here is uh, being able to share information, to be able to share REM notes. And this last feature, being able to share a REM note document with either my students or the public, this was the deal breaker when deciding between Obsidian and RemNote. The ability to simply share information to someone else. And with Obsidian, it just, again, as I mentioned, it was just uh, cumbersome. It was, it's, it's not as straightforward as it is with uh, RemNote. And what I really appreciate with the ability to share RimNote is uh, RimNote documents is that you can you don't have to share the entire document. Let me show you an example. This is a class that I'm teaching, and uh, currently I have set up weekly modules, and each this is the current uh, module that we're working on. And uh, this is week 15, and it's very simple. But I have uh, the days of the week that I have class, and then within each of those days, I will have either instructions or notes to myself, or it could be even more, uh, maybe it's a completely different RemNote document that includes some kind of activity. So this is an example here called Listening Comprehension Performance Task, or PT. And... This was an example where I am planning out my day, so I begin here with my instructions, begin the, and in this case what I did was I very quickly, and I can give it whatever name I want, I can in seconds create by hitting control enter a new rem document in, in seconds, right? And that's what I did here. I created this new document, then I went to that document and uh, began to uh, complete the instructions for this particular uh, task. But what's good about this is I can share this task without having to share, let's say, all of this information. There might be times where, let's say, that I have some notes to myself, and you know I have this information here as a line item, but maybe I don't want to share this with my students or with the public. Maybe I just want to share the performance task here. So in this case, I can click here and go to share. In fact, this says reshare because I've already shared it once. And I can share this, which then provides a link, a public link that I can share with whomever I wish to be able to access what I'm sharing here. So I copy the link, share it with my students, and they're able to see uh, this information. They do not need to have an account with RemNote to be able to view this information. So this is just, this was uh, the deal breaker for me. Again, thinking about Obsidian versus RemNote, the ability to be able to share parts of the information without having to really deal with trying to say, well, what part will be public, which will be private. And uh, again, it's very easy to make that distinction by using or choosing the, the REM note here that you want. If I, I could have a line item here, let's say that I have certain instructions for something and I have this text, the way I probably would do this would be to select here which takes me to the document itself. Notice I've got the breadcrumbs up here, so it's easy to it's easy to go back and uh, go back to a parent rem note document if I need to. But here I can again I can share this information, and I'm only sharing this one line item. And it's taking a second here. Maybe I can click here. There we go. So again, I can only share this. I can also just select here and copy the link to the my rim. This is a little bit different though. This is for internal purposes. So if I want to copy links to rim for my own purpose, I could copy this link to the rim. 
But again, if I'm going to share this publicly, this is how I would do it. I would go to the page and select the ellipsis, go down to share and uh, publish, uh, publish this information. This is probably, although this seems fairly straightforward, um, for me, this uh, is very important and makes it just very easy to uh, be able to, to share what I need to and then also be able to add information that's for my eyes only. And so uh, those are the features for me that really um, that brought me into RimNode and that's going to keep me here are these features that I'm sharing with you here. Again, this is probably not for everyone, depending on your use case and your own personal preference. Uh, your, your decision, right, is going to need to address your own context. But for me, RimNote, uh, this is hands down uh, the best service for what I need as an instructor, being able to plan my lessons, to be able to plan my podcasts or my newsletter, or if I'm doing research and I'm just writing out and doing research and finding information and articles, bringing in those PDFs, taking notes, and just building out my knowledge graph kind of organically and not really dealing with folders, hardly even dealing with making distinctions between a, a draft document and a finished document. I think having some RemNote documents penned is useful, but beyond that, that's the only status that is important for me as I'm as I just continue to organically create my knowledge graph by going into wherever I need to. If I want to search control P, I can easily find what I need in terms of uh, the search feature. Uh, the shortcuts being able to embed REM notes, which they refer to as portals, the references or the bi-directional links, just all on the keyboard, being able to set that up very easily, very quickly. Um, yeah, it's, it's uh, very useful for me. Now, that's about all I want to get into. There's some other things that I do like in terms of how to export and back up your information. Um, there are some other valuable features that I think are useful, especially when you're talking about a service with a proprietary service. Uh, there might be some concerns about exporting to uh, Markdown, for example, or, or HTML. You're able to do all of that uh, using RemNote, so uh, I can easily back up my information, worst case scenario, if I need to, to import it into another service. Um, certainly that, that is uh, an option. So uh, I think I'll stop there. If anyone wants to reach out to me, I'm curious how you're using RemNode or if you're using another service and it's working for you, feel free to reach out to me on my Twitter handle at B-N-L-E-E-Z. My name is Benjamin Stewart at BenjaminLStewart.net. Thanks for listening.